When we look up at our night sky, we are forced to ask questions that we had never even considered before about curious objects that are equal parts wonderful and mysterious. In this series, I'm going to look at some of the strangest objects in our cosmos, from the biggest black holes we've ever observed to the most bizarre and unexplainable objects that I've captured for a telescope. These are my astronomical curiosities. In today's video, we're going to explore why the demon star Algol blinks or why does it appear to blink to us here on Earth? I imaged the star for just under 69 hours and managed to produce a light curve so we can explain just exactly why it is that the brightness dips and comes back up again and why for some reason it dips again. I'm Dame Scotting and this is Astronomical. It's hard not to look up at our night sky and be amazed by its wonders. It can fill you with some of the most complex emotions when you look up at the varying bright colours of stars. But for many of our ancestors, this particular star did not bring wonder or excitement. It brought fear. Algol's name is derived from Arabic, Raz al-Ghul, which translates to the head of the ogre. We know it as the Demon Star. It wasn't just the Arabs that had a bad feeling about it. Cultures from all across the globe associate it with violence and misfortune. The ancient Egyptian calendar for lucky and unlucky days was created 3,200 years ago. But even then, Algol was strongly linked to unfortunate events. Ptolemy associated Algol with people dying by having their heads decapitated. A very similar story to that of Perseus and the snake-haired Gorgon, Medusa. Medieval Arabic commanders did their best to ensure that no major battle were initiated whilst the light of Algol was weak. The demon star has been a bad omen for millennia, but what was really occurring? So, in order to explain why the demon star gets dimmer and appears to blink to us here on Earth, I'm going to use this lighting setup. Now, although Algol may appear as one star to us in our night sky, it is actually made up of two stars, Algol 1 and Algol 2. These two stars are closer than the Earth is to Venus, or our sun is to the planet Mercury, which is very close indeed. Our view of the star here on Earth is unique. From our own point of view, Algol 1 and Algol 2 form an eclipsing binary star because they orbit in the same plane as our own line of sight. This pair of eclipsing binary stars is separated by mere 0.062 astronomical units. Now that is astonishingly small, to the point where matter is being transferred from one star to the other due to the more massive star's stronger gravitational influence. As you can see here, Algol 1 is extremely bright. To be as precise as possible, it is 26 times brighter than Algol 2. Algol 2 orbits around Algol 1. So watch what happens when Algol 2 passes in front of Algol 1. We go from having the brightness of two stars down to the brightness of effectively just one star. But then it carries on moving around the star, and then after about 69 hours, it comes back around again. So, every three days that you look at this star, you'll notice there's a period where it looks a lot dimmer than it normally is. Okay, so using the images I've taken, I've managed to plot this light curve. Now, you can see the main data point just here is Algol, the star, the star we're looking at. But there's also two more star points just down here that I've used as reference stars. And that's because when we're observing the night sky here on Earth, as opposed to using a space telescope, we have atmospheric disturbance. We have clouds that pass in front of our viewpoint of the star. So if a very thin cloud passes in front of our view of Algol, I might not pick it up with my eye. So in order to get rid of this effect, to nullify it, I use reference stars because then these other stars will also have the same dips that Algol has and by using them as reference stars I should be able to straighten out my data a tiny bit more. So that's just one thing to be aware of. Now the dip in brightness occurs over a 10 hour period. So now I've watched the star for a very long period but it's pretty much impossible for me to watch it all the way through. That's for a number of reasons. So the first one is the night skies in the UK aren't typically that long. Even during the winter it struggles to get 10 hours of clear night time. So the chances of me being able to observe Algol for such a long uninterrupted period are very slim. Also so the brightness of this star varies over a period of 69 hours. So it's very difficult.
difficult for me to analyze a star continuously for that long enough period. Pretty much impossible because the sun comes up, which means I want to get an uninterrupted data set. Very difficult to do as an amateur, but I have still managed to produce enough data points to get this dip in brightness to show you that Algol, the demon star, blinks. In science, your data set rarely turns out how you expect it to. Things rarely turn out perfectly, but it's the imperfections that make science so wonderful. This, however, is pretty much as close as you're going to get to a perfect data set. This was taken by the Transiting Exoplanet Survey satellite. It was looking at the star Algol for a period of more than 20 days, and you can see repeated dips in the brightness of the star here. But what's really interesting is that there's not just one dip in its light curve. Now, what is it that's causing those smaller dips? Although in my images I managed to analyse a very significant drop in brightness, there is one thing that I missed, and that's the second dip that occurs as Algol 2 orbits Algol 1. So, we have the first dip, which is when Algol 2 passes in front of Algol 1 and blocks some of the light. But then as Algol 2 continues to orbit around, there's a point where Algol 1 partially eclipses Algol 2. That would have been extremely difficult for me to pick up with my telescope setup. But when you're using a space telescope that doesn't have to deal with atmospheric disturbance, it's a lot easier. For me, the biggest inconsistency is the sky itself. I live in England, and England is notorious for lots and lots of clouds. But that's okay, because we have achieved enough data to prove why this demon star appears to blink in our night sky. At this current point in time, Algol is just under 93 light years away from us. But that wasn't always the case. In fact, we once had a fairly close and intimate relationship with this star. Roughly 7.3 million years ago, Algol passed to within just 9.8 light years of our own solar system, which meant its brightness at that point would have been an apparent magnitude of negative 2.5, which means that due to its close proximity to us, Algol was once the brightest star in our night sky. Imagine the stories that our ancestors would have told if the brightest star in our night sky was one that dipped as violently as Algol seems to. Perhaps in the same way our ancestors worshipped the sun and moon, Algol may have had a stronger influence on previous cultures besides telling them what days were unlucky and when and when not to go to war. This is why the night sky can be so spectacular when the stories of old are retold. And I think that's really interesting and incredibly special that someone like myself, an amateur astronomer, can collect data on that, can analyze that, can image that and show you exactly what's happening. And I can do it all from my back garden. I'm Damon Scotting and this was Astronomical.